Hunting hormones can be a tricky business. Are they simmering, surging or non-existent? And will our peeps and squeaks emulating the noise of a youngster fool the buck into thinking, where there's young, there's going to be mum? Well, on this trip to Aberdeenshire to see our good friend Sergio Couto, we have all the bells and whistles to help create the right mood music. <laughs> <laughs> They're quite different. <laughs> yes, there is some adjustment here. So yeah. if I pull it all the way back. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's the guy. What's that one then? That's from the deer cast. Is the boy that makes them? Oh yeah. Yeah, similar. Box deer did not must be like people. We don't yeah. like yeah, all the same, same tune. Yeah, yeah. You know? So it works different ways for different. So you're saying that um, you need about four or five different bootloads. Uh, Definitely. Because, no, I just happened to have two because I just picked up this jacket and was another one. I have two. I got. I, I actually got two. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's have every single one, please. I want two, <laughs> three, four. <laughs> <laughs> We're here for a couple of days with four outings planned across lots of different farmland landscapes, from cabbage patch bucks to valley bucks to high crops and stubble bucks, come rain or shine. Our first outing is a simple affair. We spot two bucks which show no or limited interest in the call, and then we stumble across a third. What are you doing I shot him in the base of the neck, Serge. I shot him in the base of the neck. Save me. Save me. Well, yeah, save me. I also drop him on the spot because he's quite charged up. Yeah, yeah. I think if he was, if he was uh, a shot, heart shot, he'd have gone on over that hedge and then through here. And... Yeah. How far? 116. 116, was it? Hey, pressure is off. Dave is smiling, so. <laughs> Everyone's happy. Good <laughs> flavour change just like it does with a fallow, Serge? I don't think so. Well, I don't noticed. No? Paul, Online. what do you think? Yeah. Um, yeah. I had this conversation with uh, Jose at the, on, the, on the food court the other day, and he said they're not as strong as fallow and seeker and red when they come into rut, so they're not quite as uh, tangy, be the word you'd use. It's a youngster, and after a field, Gralic will be heading to the larder. It's a 4.30 a.m. start and we head to some stubble fields. Although Paul is not a thermal fan when he's stalking, Sergio, who works with Infrared, uses his spotter to target his calls, picking up heat sources in the thick stuff. At the moment, the bucks just aren't being unseated. Sergio then spots a buck and doe in clear fell adjacent to the stubble field. They are beautifully camouflaged and Paul needs to be dialed in. 213. I can't see it. Oh, I see him, I see him, I see him, I see him. How far is it, Serge? 213. Okay. You right, David? The shot strikes, but the buck runs. Deadly. Yeah. Take him again. Paul gives it a second to make sure. Well done, Paul. Thank you. It's a good recovery. Okay, so we have to have a, a full-up shot there, Paul. So just explain what went on. Yeah, so the first shot, obviously, it was it was 213. There's quite a bit of bullet drop on that um, up there, so I was obviously aiming a piece, a bit of an angle, and um, yeah, a bit of a bit of a bullet drop. And um, it caught him at the front of the shoulder. Obviously, the front of the shoulder's gone, but he did a, a quick circle out there. And um, second shot was smack on the money, dropped him on the spot. 
We weren't all perfect all the time, you know. <laughs> we shot a lot of stuff on, on camera and um, you try to make it perfect every time. But like I say, straight in with a follow-up shot to really thick cover. That's a powerhead blaze again though, yeah? Powerhead blaze, yeah, the copper, so. Do you know um, so 6.5, do you know what grain they are? They are um, 120 grain. So what have, we, what have we used those on before? We used them on yeah. Robux. We used them on Muntjac, Chinese. Red Deer in Scotland last really? year, yeah. As Paul is wearing his new Swazi gear, Sergio suggests a New Zealand style extraction, a Roebuck backpack. Got a few ticks on him, but we'll be alright. That one? That'd be right. Very neat. After a power nap, it's back out again. This time a stunning valley sitting below a farm. We filmed here before, but it didn't produce anything. A big forest of light, yeah. Sergio sets us up in a good vantage point. A doe and kid move below us. After about half an hour, a buck stands and heads into cover about 200 metres away. We decide to wait and see if it reappears. It does, and Paul has another challenging shot. All right. Thank you. <sighs> Took my time on that one. That was not a comfortable shot. <laughs> very, 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 very cool. Ah, oh, man. What a location. What a location, beautiful. Yeah, and he come out, didn't he? Come out to have a little look at the squeak. Yeah, yeah. Between our two calling, he just kept coming. <laughs> Brilliant. That was, good, that was good. We worked for that, didn't we? <laughs> woo! I have to do a poor children call as well. A little woo. <laughs> they don't like that. They always stop and have a look at that one. It's another clean Aberdeenshire buck, but a dangerous one. Yeah. Fantastic. Ah, yes. Good one to shoot. Malform, spiker. Oh Look at that. Oh. Bit of murder buck cross. Great one to shoot that old buck as well. Old, deformed, or older buck, yeah. Great. Point where Sergio is, so people get a sense of where we're... So it's the big, big tree on the, on the horizon, yeah? Yeah, that, that um, silver birch on the horizon there, yeah, you can see him underneath it. Yeah, nice shot. It's a great shot down into the valley floor, but that means we need to retrieve it. You drag him feet up first, it goes against the fur, so it's not quite, there's a bit of resistance on the, on the grass and stuff, so it doesn't slide through so quick. And um, the head obviously catches in everything, especially with this big hook here. So what it does is put it on the front feet and uh, put his head through, feet in, nice and close. If I had a bit of string, I might tie them together, but we might not need it. We give it a go. Pull that up. Because we've got um, a hell climb. Up there. Yeah. Let's give it a go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, copper works then, even at the 219 yards. Yeah. Even downhill. Downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Sergio comes to the rescue and saves us a serious climb. However, it doesn't save Paul's son, Charlie, from getting harnessed up and helping his dad. Back to that murder buck. People say that the roe deer fight is one of the most aggressive on the deer species. Yeah. You find them with yeah. poacher wounds. And that's because of roe deer like that. Older ones that refuse to back down. The bucks normally have three times, and when they fight with each other, they will lock with, it, with itself. The problem with this type of buck is they are old. So they run, they, they had many fights in the past and the younger three, four year old comes in, thinks can take them on, have a fight with it. There's no locking horns. And that one, for example, goes straight to the eye or normally when they, they, they kill them is under here, under the armpit. Yeah. I found a few dead. 
is always like a punch hole right here. With just a little bit of light left, David asks if the guys will head off into the crop for a drone shot. The guys let off a couple of peeps just in case they spark interest. Look at the top right hand corner of the screen. The buck is coming in. Then Paul spots it. Well, gentlemen, I watched that remotely. We left the cameraman behind with the drone. Yeah, we went down there and searched just give a few peeps and then uh, the buck has come steaming in from over the ridge there, a long way away. It was the best reaction we had, the yeah. peep this peep. through this. Perfect, just come bounding in and um, we got on the sticks and then the, the drone came over the top. Thing is, right, okay, so from my perspective, I just see you both dive to the ground and thinking, hey, up, I, I and like then that. there's a blob. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Yeah. I shot him right right on the edge of the, yeah. the barley, so I couldn't put it no, no lower down. But actually, I shot him just right underneath the, the, jaw. the jaw, and it comes straight out on the, on the neck, dropped him, dropped him perfect, so... 40, yeah, 40, 50 yards. 40, 50 yards Is that all? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once again, Sergio has delivered the goods, despite the weird and wonderful behaviour of the local roe deer. If you'd like to hunt with Sergio in Scotland or Portugal, contact him via his website, sercoutwildharvest.com. And for more information about the SACO S20 and its stock options, go to sacco.fi.